Pick up Pin in the conversation. Can pick it up where he left off after. I'm going to pray for this message this morning as I start out, because I believe it's one the enemy doesn't want to be received. I believe it's one that is crucial uh, in the day and age that we live in. Uh, it's one talking about revival and just bringing about the kingdom. And so I just want to uh, pray into it as we get started here today. So, Father, I just pray your words would just ring true. Your truth would be proclaimed here this morning. Father, your words would go out. Give us hearts to receive what you're going to speak to us through your word this morning. And so, Father, I pray that it would, it would bless our walk. It would grow us. It would challenge us to be active and proactive in your kingdom work, Lord. And so, Father, we just give this to you this morning in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Have you ever been so thirsty that you've been unable to quench your thirst? So thirsty that not even a Sprite would do. So thirsty you can't obey your thirst. I remember back when I uh, was in the Perch and Golf the last day we were actually in the Gulf doing flight operations. I had kind of a, a, a challenging time. I passed out. <laughs> and so now, now let me set the stage for you. We were there uh, about uh, two months operating. Uh, and so every day temperatures would be in the 110 range 112 air temperature now okay now you add in all the jet exhaust all the uh stuff going around the flight deck temperatures were raised another 10 15 20 degrees and of course we could be out there with our shorts just kind of lounging right on lounge chairs and 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 short sleeves and swim trunks right get the hoses out yeah no, no, there I was in full flight deck gear, so flight deck jersey on, camo pants, heavy camo pants, float coat that had all these contraptions on it, um, my cranial, eye goggles, earplugs, uh, so I, I was hot, I was hot, oh yeah, steel toe boots, so no flip flops, uh, and then I had this uh, this little tiny camelback. It was about yay big, strapped to my back. Held about yeah, maybe a gallon of water. Uh, so my back was sweating constantly from this thing. And so I remember just that last day, I just could not be hydrated enough. And I went, took a break from, from the deck. I went down in and I passed out. Uh, and so I go down to sick bay, which is our medical unit. And uh, the corpsman hooks me up to this IV bag. And uh, this was basically the sound. <laughs> corpsman looks at me, wide-eyed. He's like, wow, I've never seen an IV go that quickly. Like, literally, my body was that dry that it just sucked that thing up. And he's like, well, I got a problem. He's like, you probably should have another one. But I don't have, uh, you know, a, a big supply of these to just keep giving you IVs. He's like, so just here, take a cup and just sip water. Keep sipping water until you get hydrated again. So, yeah, I mean, the Navy, we streamline everything. Um, it's actually shocked he didn't give me Motrin and send me on my way. But anyway, uh, so... You know, as hot and dry as my body was, it still was not compared, could not compare to as hot and dry as the bones in Ezekiel 37. 
valley of dry bones. We're going to read that passage here this morning. Ezekiel 37, probably a familiar passage to you all. The hand of the Lord was upon me and he brought me out in the spirit of the Lord and set me down in the middle of the valley. There was full of bones and he led me around among them and behold, there were many on the surface of the valley and behold, they were very dry. And he said to me, son of man, can these bones live? And I answered, O oh Lord God, you know. Then he said to me, prophesy over these bones and say to them, O oh, dry bones, Hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God to these bones. Behold, I will cause breath to enter you, and you shall live. And I will lay sinews upon you, and will cause flesh to come upon you, and cover you with skin, and put breath in you, and you shall live, and you shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I was commanded. And as I prophesied, there was a sound, and behold, a rattling and the bones came together, bone to its bone. And I looked, and behold, there were sinews on them, and flesh had come upon them, and skin had covered them, but there was no breath in them. Then he said to me, Prophesy to the breath. Prophesy, son of man, and say to the breath, Thus says the Lord God, Come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe on me slain, that they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived and stood on their feet, an exceedingly great army. Then he said to me, Son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. Behold, they say, our bones are dried up, and our hope is lost. We are indeed cut off. Therefore prophesy and say to them, Thus says the Lord God, Behold, I will open your graves and raise you from your graves, O my people, and I will bring you into the land of Israel. And you shall know that I am the Lord when I open your graves and raise you from your graves, O my people. And I will put my spirit within you, and you shall live, and I will place you in your own land. Then you shall know that I am the Lord. I have spoken, and I will do it, declares the Lord. The context of this passage is, of course, that Israel's in captivity in Babylon, right? Due to their disobedience, their failure to uphold the commands and statutes of the Lord, God brought in uh, captivity, took them captive as a manner of disciplining them for their disobedience. And so this is a consequence of their actions. I know that's... It's terms we don't like to use these days, right? There's consequences for your actions. Now it's possible that these bones are actually remnants of Israel's army that went out against Babylon. Now this is in direct correlation to what was prophesied in Deuteronomy 28, 25-26. It says, the Lord will cause you to be defeated before your enemies. You shall go out one way against them and flee seven ways before them. And you shall be a horror to all the kingdoms of the earth. And your dead body shall be food for all the birds of the air, for the beasts of the earth. And there shall be no one to frighten them away. And then Jeremiah 34, 20. And I will give them into the hand of their enemies and into the hand of those who seek their lives. Their dead body shall be food for the birds of the air and the beasts of the earth. Now, as we walk through this today, I, I have some questions to ask ourselves. Five key questions to ask ourselves as we consider what this mean for us today in light of the world that we live in. Question number one. You might want to write these down as you pray throughout the week. Journal as you have your quiet time. This would be good questions. Review this passage in Ezekiel. And ask yourself, number one, how am I being led? How am I being led? Notice the prophet is being led by the Spirit of God into the middle of a valley. You know, I feel like uh, at times we, uh, we want to avoid the valley, right? 
We want to avoid whatever trial, tribulation is waiting for us. See, we want, we want the mountaintop experiences with God. See, Jesus said, in this life you will face trouble, right? We'll have trials of many kinds. They hated me, they're going to hate you. James says, consider it pure joy that if you face trials. No, when you face trials. It's to persevere us. But see, we're all led by something. We're all propelled by something. And if we're not led by the Spirit of God, then we're being led by our flesh or by the enemy. Are we giving the enemy a foothold into our life? Are we letting things in that are getting under our armor? How am I being led? Is it something, someone else, something other than the Good Shepherd? Because here's the thing, when we're led by the Good Shepherd, though I walk through the valley, I will fear no evil, for I know you are with me. See, when we go through the valley, we don't have to fear if we trust that we're being led by the Spirit of God because we know that God is with us. He's walking with us every step of the way. Yes, it's trying. Yes, it's hard. But at the other side, we're going to have deeper faith. We're going to have a deeper connection. God never leads us somewhere to abandon us. He never takes us into a place to leave us and forsake us. Just keep that in mind. So many people, they get into the midst of it. They're in that valley and it's like, oh, it's too hard. And they abandon it before they get to the promise, right? Before they get to the, the thing that God wants to deliver for them. They, they shortcut it. It's something that we love to do in our instant gratification culture, right? We don't want to wait. We, we want what we want. When do we want it? Now. Some of us are like that with spiritual gifts and the move of God. We want, we want the healing now. We want tongues now. We want prophecy now. We want... All this stuff now. But we have no basis, no no base to to for that to anchor itself to because we haven't connected ourselves with the giver. We haven't connected ourselves with God. We haven't put in the legwork of intimacy with the Father. We haven't entered the throne room. We haven't prayed. So God's not going to deliver just the show, just to appease us. Sometimes those things wait for us at the other side of the valley. Because God wants to see, are we going to actually follow through? Are we going to follow him? So how am I being led? Number two, what is my spiritual condition? Look at the condition of these bones. They're very dry. Not just little dry. Very dry. The water's done been wrung out. All the flesh is off. And see, here's the thing that we need to capture. This wasn't, this wasn't just a, a, a display of, of, of bones. This was a display of disgrace. This was disgraceful and shameful to the nation of Israel to have their defeated army's bones out in open air just decomposing where they weren't wrapped up. There was no burial ceremony. There was no uh, herbs brought in and oils. They didn't partake in, in their special burial ceremony. So this was a huge disgrace for the nation of Israel, adding insult to injury. 
So they're in captivity, their enemy is defeated and lying there for the whole world to see. You can imagine the mockery that probably came. I thought your God was so great, Israel, that we defeated you and here your bones lay. Fodder for buzzards and beasts. Verse 11 speaks more to their condition. Once they had life brought back into them, they speak, our bones are dried up, our hope is lost, and we are cut off. Sometimes I think we can throw out those words too. We can be in a desperate place. Sometimes I don't think we're desperate enough. Sometimes I think we try to fix it on our own might and in our own way. And if you're there, then guess what? You're not dry on it. Your spiritual condition isn't desperate enough. Because when you get desperate, you get driven to your knees, you become humbled, and you're like, okay, God, I give up. I surrender. See, if you're not surrendering all, if you're not surrendering your bank account, your 401k, if you're not surrendering your comfort, if you're not surrendering uh, just your daily life, your habits, then your spiritual condition is dry. <coughs> not dry enough. Because you haven't gotten desperate enough to ask for God to fill you with life each and every day. So what is my spiritual condition? How am I being led? What is my spiritual condition? Number three, how am I ordering my life? Notice verse three through eight. Son of man, can these bones live? And I answered, oh Lord God, you know. Only you know. Then he said to me, prophesy over these bones and say to them, oh dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God to these bones, Behold, I will cause breath to enter you, and you shall live. And I will lay sinews upon you, and will cause flesh to come upon you, and cover you with skin, and put breath in you, and you shall live, and you shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I was commanded, and as I prophesied there was a sound, and behold, a rattling, and the bones came together, bone to its bone. And I looked, and behold, there were sinews on them, and flesh come upon them, and skin had covered them, but there was no breath in them. These bones, they had flesh. I mean, I mean, I can just imagine Ezekiel just standing there, right? Like, watching this whole freaky thing happen, because I, I don't know, that would, that would kind of cause the hairs to stand up on my head. If these dry bones start rattling... Right? Start getting formed together. You see all these like innards, veins, and, and all these sinews coming on them, right? Everything coming back into place. Organs developing, right? Skin coming on. Like, I was just imagining this in my head going, wow. Like, if I was Ezekiel, I'd be like trembling in my boots a little bit. But see, there's no breath in them. There's no breath. See, we can organize our lives around our calendars. We can organize our lives around our hobbies. We can organize our lives around pretty much anything. We can go to programs. We can go to Bible studies, prayer meetings, even. We can orient our whole lives around a certain schedule. But at the end of the day, we'll just have organization and order. Now, don't get me wrong, organization and order are good. We serve a God of organization and order. But programs that are just organized to fill a calendar don't transform lives. I 
I know people that culturally they were Christian. They were in churches growing up as many times as the church was open. Three, four days a week they were there. There was nothing beneath the surface and the moment that they faced any kind of troubling thing, they were ready to abandon it because there was no substance there. There was no life. There was just the organization. There was just the thing that we did. Those things are important, believe me. We have Sunday school, it's important. Yes, plant seeds. I'm not I'm not discrediting programs here. Don't don't mishear me. But if we just order our lives on our to-do list. And we're no different than just the bones with flesh on them. We have to get to the next step. Number four. Am I living a life full of the Holy Spirit? Son of man, can these bones live? And I answered, oh Lord God, you know. Then he said to me, prophesy over these bones and say to them, oh dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God to these bones, behold, I will cause breath to enter you and you shall live and I will lay sinews upon you and will cause flesh to come upon you and cover you with skin and put breath in you and you shall live and you shall know that I am the Lord. Now this breath, this word for breath, ruah, in the Hebrew, it's the same word for spirit, for Holy Spirit, same word we see in Genesis where the Spirit of God was hovering over creation. Because we know, we know that the full trinity was active in Genesis, right? It wasn't like, oh, the Holy Spirit just came in New Testament, right? No. We see the work of the entire triune God throughout the entire redemptive story. The Holy Spirit was there in that same word, that breath, is ruah, right? Now, the bones are alive, right? They have skin. They have skin. And so here it is. Verse 9. Verse 9. Then he said, prophesy to the breath, to the ruah. Prophesy, son of man, and say to that breath. Thus says the Lord God, come from the four winds. Oh, breathe and breathe on these slain that they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived and stood on their feet, an exceedingly great army. Without the Holy Spirit, we are just hollow shells. Frozen chosen. See, the Holy Spirit is what supplies the power, the life, the very breath of God. We can't get it until our bones are dry enough, until we're desperate enough. There's no government bailout big enough to surpass the work of the Spirit in our life. Everyone loves to come to church and they get, right, the big, big word now is stimulus, right? We're all happy that the government is sending us stimulus checks. So many people get excited, right? We get all this free money. <laughs> I learned a long time ago there's no such thing as a free lunch. <laughs> right? When people come to church, they want a stimulus package. They want to be stimulated in their emotions. They want to feel good, right? They want to know how to raise happy kids. They want to know how to be blessed in their bank account. They want to know all this stuff, right?
problem with our emotions is they're fickle. Yes, we acknowledge them because our Creator God gave them to us. But we cannot live by them because they will lead us astray. The Holy Spirit is there to give us life. You know, in a period of financial lack, I'm on my knees, praying to Jehovah Jireh to be my provider. In a period of financial blessing, I'm on my knees, praying to Jehovah Jireh to continue to be my provider. I'm not ebbing and flowing with the dry times, right? But sometimes we got to get low in order to get high. Sometimes we got to get into that valley. We got to be led by the Spirit. We got to be placed right smack in the middle of a valley in order to get to the other side and stand on the mountaintop with God, looking back at the valley, seeing the picture, and seeing, yes, Lord, thank you for your faithfulness. I can see it now. Sorry for my lack of understanding in the beginning. Sorry for my disobedience and not wanting to listen when you were guiding me here. But now I understand. That's the thing. God is always faithful. I don't know why. Sometimes it just takes me so long. I get hard-headed and stubborn. And God just has to hit me upside the head with a Holy Spirit anvil. You know, like the old cartoons. You know, sometimes that's what it takes to wake me up because I'm not... Hearing that still small voice of making excuses, right? Like, oh, I don't want to do that. I don't want to go there. I don't want to talk to this person. I don't want to give this Christian card to this non-believer. Oh, my. This non-believing co-worker, I could get in trouble. Am I living a fool life full of the Holy Spirit? You know, Jesus says... In John 10, 10, I've come so that you may have life, life to the fullest. This is where I struggle for places that believe in cessationism, that God just stopped removing them in the gifts. You know, this is where I struggle because there's it's a, not a very full life without the power of God. It becomes the bones without the life. It becomes the sinews, the, the, the skin-covered skeleton without the breath. And it's an incomplete life. Because here's number five. Am I believing for a super natural miracle. Now, we can surmise you know, to how long these bones were in that valley. I um, guess pretty long for the body to decompose, right? The skin to just melt away or be eaten away. Then the sun to bleach them. They were there a pretty long time. Long enough to get very dry. Right? Not just dry, but very dry. But notice in the span of a few verses, in the span of a few minutes, what the power of God can do to resurrect these bones back to life. Not just put skin on them, raise them upright, but breathe life into them. Just took minutes of the prophet being obedient, prophesying over these bones, watching this unfold. What, what years took away. It's the problem is some people, right, they check out. My life was too terrible. I spent you know, decades just living wrong for God. I hear this all the time. God can't use me because of this. It's like, okay, but you're born again, right? 
You agreed to follow Jesus, right? Because the reality is we're all in good company. We all have a past. We all have a testimony that God built up, that He freed us from. That's in the past. Paul held the coats of the Pharisees and the Sadducees as they stoned Stephen. He was complicit. He took great pride in going around and murdering Christians in this fledgling movement following this Jewish rabbi called Jesus. <laughs> and then on that road, He had an encounter. And he felt the power of God. And in an instant, Saul became Paul, the greatest missionary ever on the face of the earth, the author of the majority of the New Testament. Three missionary journeys. <laughs> Boldness in proclaiming the gospel. So, Guess what? You got a past. Well, when the Holy Spirit breathes life into you, you're in good company. You're forgiven and you're free. And you're set loose in your freedom. Not to abuse it, not to go back to your passage of sin, but to go out, be an ambassador, and say, look what my God has done. Now, I'm not denouncing programs counseling programs. I'm a trained counselor. Believe me, I'm not going to stand up here and denounce that stuff. Because yes, God can set you free in an instant, but there's still some lingering stuff you got to shore up. So yes, seek counseling from a professional. Not, not at all coming against that. Sometimes I feel like we can get too wrapped up in that stuff. But we forget we serve a supernatural God who moves in supernatural ways, who can bring supernatural miracles in an instant to bring dry bones back to life. And so if you're sitting here in a dry spiritual condition, and you're thinking, oh, it's going to take weeks for me to make up all of these Bible study videos I missed. It's going to take weeks to get back on track in my daily reading plan. <laughs> It's going to take weeks to get where I need to be with God. It's going to get years to get cleaned up. Can I remind you of some dry bones? And in an instant, they were prophesied over the word of truth and breathed life into them. And they came back in an instant because it's the power of God. Am I believing for God to move in a supernatural way? Or am I just following a man-made formula? So here's the thing. If I'm reading this book of a God who moved 2,000 years ago, it's not going to hit me. Just being real. If I'm, I'm just reading stories of ancient history, it's not going to mean much to my life now. But if I'm reading the very anointed, power-filled words of God, I tell the redemptive story of His Son, Jesus, who came to the cross, who died for our sins so that we might be free who was raised from the dead so that we might have life. And then He leaves us what? The Holy Spirit. So we can live a full life. Exceedingly, abundantly more than we could ever ask or imagine. Exceedingly, abundantly more isn't me just sitting in a chair week after week, listening to a speaker, reading a book, a few times a day and just waiting for Jesus to come back 
Does that sound like a good Christian life to you? A couple of weeks ago, you heard Brian Stevenson talk about an adventure, everyday adventure with God. You know, it stuck with me. Paul and Silas, <laughs> they were just a walking, right? This, this lady comes harassing them every day, following them around, right? <laughs> He's been testifying to Jesus, right? Walking billboard. I love this. I just picture this in my mind. Paul just finally one day has enough, and he just turns around. He just rebukes the demon. Calls it out right there on the spot. Just an ordinary day in the life of Paul. That's power. That's power. Or how about the guy that was falling asleep while, you know, Paul was preaching. I don't any of you would do this. Fortunately, we don't sit up high here. But he falls right out the window, right? Dead. Boom. Paul just, well, okay, goes out. Raises him right there. Back to life. It's power. Power. Peter. Just going to the temple one day. Heals the man. It's just ordinary days. Power. Am I living my life that way? You know, one of the things that has so blessed my life is being surrounded by people who live that way. You know, I've heard Ryan's stories of what he's seen when he goes places. You know, that just fills me with so much faith. And so then when I'm out, I get bold enough when, I, when I'm prompted by God to go up to somebody and just speak a word to them of encouragement, heal. If God calls me to that. See, that's, that's what it is, church. Some of us, we got to get some flesh and breath into these dry bones. Some of us got to get desperate enough to receive that from God. Some of us got to stop looking to the government, the political party, to be our rescuer. Because it's got to be a move of God. It's got to be a revival in this country. It starts with our hearts. If the church is just walking around, if, if people come in and they just see a valley of dry bones whenever they come into our churches, they're going to be like, well, I guess the answer doesn't lie with Jesus. So I want, I want them, I want people to come to Oasis to see the life, to see the Ruah, Holy Spirit living, active, breathing out, overflowing. Some of us maybe have to get drier so that we can get to that point where we're ready to put on flesh. I love what Watchman Nee is, is credited with saying. He says, a drowning man cannot be saved until he is utterly exhausted and ceases to make the slightest effort to save himself. It's really easy in our country to be independent and self-sufficient. When you're self-reliant, you're relying on yourself. We gotta get God reliant. It's the only way. We can live our lives according to our plans, our efforts, our calendars. But that's the thing, then we wind up with our consequences. When we reach the end of our strength, when we become dry enough find God there waiting to replenish us restore us reconcile us regenerate us renew us fill us with a purpose and a passion to go out then 
and represent his life to a desperate, dry world out there. Bring life to dry bones, to deadness. Wow. May it be God. Father, I pray that we take these questions to heart and we would have a heart to heart with you, Holy Spirit. And Lord, we would not just sugarcoat things, but we would actually listen for not the things we want to hear, but the truth of where we are with you. May we give a reasonable assessment, Lord. And Father, may you meet us where we are to bring life into us in whatever area has gone so dry that we're desperate and parched and in need of fresh wind, fresh breath to fill these dry bones. Lord, I pray for new ministry seeds to be planted here today. Lord, I pray for hearts to receive visions of what you have ready, waiting, you're just simply, patiently waiting for our readiness, for us to be dry enough to receive it. May we come to that place of desperation where we're not just giving lip service but we want to follow you with every ounce of our being. Breathe life into your dry bones so that we may live for you. In Jesus' name, amen. If your vision for your family, for your ministry, for your life, for your business can be accomplished through your flesh, then it's not big enough. It's not dry enough, and you're not desperate enough. Think boldly, go big, because we serve a great God who wants to release his power through each and every one of you, through the Holy Spirit inside you. Go in God's grace. Thanks for worshiping with us.